We just had an election and a new government, and to be praying for our leaders, um, whether you voted for them or not, whether you're happy about it or not, um, but um, I'm going to ditch this. So, uh, But you still shall pray for your leaders, um, so everything in here is still valid, but I just believe that um, this morning, um, how many of you were able to watch the live feed of the crusade in Luero? Um, that Ruth posted a bit. Um, so uh, we were amazed that they even had a live feed. Um, so I'm sorry if some of this is a repeat from that, but I just felt that this morning that that message was really important. Um, and I don't have any of my notes for it. Um, I just have the word of God. And um, that is good enough, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so the core of the message is that we need each and every one of us to have a love revelation. And I know I've shared some of this concept before, um, but it can never be said enough. Um, we desperately, each and every one of us, need to have a revelation of how much God loves us. Um, it, it can't be said enough. Um, and I'm going to say it one more time just to emphasize it. We need a revelation of how much God loves us. Now, we can know in our heads that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, to live a perfect life in this world. He humbled himself. He left heaven. Um, he left his throne in, in heaven, and he came down as a humble man from a poor place. And, you know, lived um, a probably less than average life as far as uh, family wealth. Um, I'm sure there were struggles. Um, his, um, his earthly father, Joseph, isn't mentioned much in the New Testament. So um, his mother, Mary, was probably a single mother at some point. Joseph probably died. So, uh, you know, so he, Jesus, in his human life, did not live the most grand, amazing types of lives. And remember, he was in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he forsook that to come down and live as one of us, live a perfect life, and did so so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sin, for all the things that we do, anything that isn't perfect according to God. Um, and he could be the Lamb of God. He could be once and forever sacrifice for every man, woman, child, whoever was and whoever will be, um, so that those who put their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, um, who confess with their lips and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he has risen from the dead, um, that we will be saved. And those who believe that will be saved. Um, those who trust in Jesus for salvation will be saved. Um, and, and so we can know that up here, but what that means in here can be such a different reality. Um, so it's really important that we have more than just head knowledge, more than just an understanding, um, more than just even be able to say all of what I just said. It's really important that we have the kind of revelation that the apostle John had. Um, the apostle John referred to himself five times in his gospel as the disciple who Jesus loved. And some translations say that he was the, the disciple that Jesus loved the most. Um, can you say that about yourself honestly? Can you actually say that about yourself? And I know that sometimes I, I have actually challenged you to say that, um, but if you can comfortably, genuinely say that right now, truly believing it, Look at the person to your right or to your left. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I am the disciple that Jesus loves most. <laughs> so now a lot of you, that's good. Praise the Lord. For you to be able to say that and believe that in your heart is huge, is huge. Um, and if you weren't able to say that, don't feel bad. Um, because it's not an uncommon thing to really, really understand that deep, deep, deep inside of who you are. That the love of Christ is so deep that it went all the way 
into Abraham's bosom, which is in Sheol, and he set the captives free. He went that deep into the depths, the bowels of the earth. That's how deep his love is. And you know how high is his love is? His love is so high that he ascended back to the earth, was here for a short time, and then ascended back into heaven, creating a way, a path that he is. He is the way to be with the Father in heaven for eternity. So that's how high his love is, right? It reaches from the bowels of the earth all the way up into heaven. Do you know the, the children's song? You came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Right? And so that's what he did, the up and down, but it's also so wide. His love is so wide, it stretches as far as east is from west and beyond. There is no limit to the love of God for you, and for you, and for you, and for you. And because scripture tells us that God is love, he is love. He just does, it's not just that he loves, or that he can love, or that he should love. He is love. He is the very definition of love. And because God is love, he is able to love each and every one of us the most. Right? Because our concept of the most is, is nothing compared with the love of God. How high, how deep, and how wide his love is. And we need that revelation. Now I remember, um, gosh... How long ago was that? A long time ago in my life, decades, several, many, I'm not sure. Um, I remember I was a believer, and uh, some of you have heard my testimony. I wasn't just a believer, I was a knower. I, I know that God is real. I've seen him, he's talked to me, uh, I've seen him in the image of Jesus, and that happened when I was not a believer, when I was an atheist. Um, and so I don't just believe that God is real, I know that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, he has given me no doubt about that revelation as much as I tried to doubt. Uh, he made it impossible for me to doubt how real God is. Um, and so, um, even though I had that revelation, even though I understood that, and even though eventually I heard the gospel. It took a long time because when I first became a knower, not just a believer, but a knower, I was in the Catholic Church and never heard the gospel. Um, and it wasn't until many years afterwards that I actually heard the gospel. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So then I knew the gospel. Um, I was actually even trained up and starting to lead um, some house groups and some Bible studies. But I didn't have that deep revelation of the love of God for me. I knew it in here, but I couldn't really accept it in here. I understood it, I believed it, and it took a lot for him to get me to accept that he could love such a horrible, terrible sinner like me. That that was even possible. Because I thought that I was, I could maybe be likable, right? I could maybe be a, a friend, but that I wasn't really truly lovable. And I don't know that that thinking is 100% wrong. And yet, despite that, God loves me anyways. He loves me anyways. And it took a lot for me to have that revelation of how much he loves me and that he not only does he love me and like me, but that he wants me to accept and live in his love, live as the disciple that he loves the most. It's really important. I mean, the pain that came out of me, the sobbing and the crying that I expressed when I finally realized, like truly, truly realized how deep the Father's love for me was. And how powerful and how forgiving. And so despite all of who I am, 
despite all of my flaws and imperfections, despite the parts of me that can be really hard to love, I finally came to the real revelation that God loves me the most. It was a very painful revelation, but in a good way. You know, sometimes um, we think of pain and we think, you know, I want to avoid pain. I don't want to feel hurt. Um, but sometimes pain is part of our healing process. Sometimes pain is a good thing. Have you ever had a wound? Um, and in the healing process, the wound starts to close over and scab over and uh, maybe even scar. And that process can actually be painful, right? Um, but at the end of it, you are healed. You are healed and you are whole. Um, and it was that sort of pain. It was the pain of healing that I experienced that made room for the love of God to be deep into my soul and to my spirit. <clears throat> to allow him to do things in my life that I thought, God, you can't do that with me because I'm not good enough. God, you can't do that with, with, with me because, you know, how, how could you possibly care for me that much? How could you possibly love me enough to allow me to do things for your namesake, for your glory, for your kingdom? And the truth is, is that none of us are good enough. But that's the point. That's the point. None of us are good enough. God is perfect, and God is love. And his standards are so beyond our reach. But that doesn't matter to him. That does not matter to him. If you feel like you've got to somehow prove yourself to God, that is a lie from the enemy. You cannot prove yourself to God. Which is why Jesus came to die for your sin. Which is why Jesus took on all of your imperfection. Because no work of any person is good enough to bring any sort of adulation or praise that should come to us. Because all praise and glory and honor belongs to Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm going a little bit off of what I was planning on sharing, but I want to contrast John's experience with Peter's. Um, John referred to himself as the disciple who Jesus loved, or in some cases, as I said, the disciple who Jesus loved most. And at the end of the Gospel of John, we read these words. This is in, excuse me, in John 21. Starting at verse 15, we read, and this is after Jesus had um, died on the cross, um, he had descended and set the captives free, um, and now he was walking amongst the disciples, um, he was teaching them a little bit, he gave the great commission during this time, and, um, and so he has these conversations, um, and in verse 15 of John 21, we read, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? These being the other disciples, other people who were around. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Um, if you don't know, um, the Apostle Peter was um, crucified also like Jesus was. But Peter said, 
I cannot die in the same way that my Lord and Savior died. So if you're going to crucify me, please crucify me upside down. Um, so Peter was crucified also, but upside down. Um, and he was carried on his cross. Um, and so that was he, him uh, dying in the way. So Jesus prophesied about Peter's death. Um, and then continuing at verse 20, we read, Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Um, and so basically to Peter, um, regarding John, um, Jesus said, My relationship with John is my relationship with John. It has nothing to do with you. You and I have our own relationship because that's what Jesus desires from each of us. Our own unique personal relationship with him. Um, and John understood that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. But Peter, when he was asked by Jesus three times, Peter, do you love me? Jesus asked, Peter, do you agape me? And that word agape for love is a very special and unique type of love. It is God's perfect, flawless, endless, eternal love. It is godly, perfect love. It is the love that is God. And so Jesus was saying, Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me with God's perfect love? And Peter kept answering back, Jesus, I phileo you. I love you like a brother. And Jesus said again, Peter, do you love me with that perfect, godly, agape love? And Peter said, Lord, I love you like a brother. And again, Jesus asked. And the response was the same. And here Peter's getting upset because Peter couldn't have and didn't have that same love revelation that John had. Now, whether he had it eventually or not, we don't know. I hope he did. Um, but he still did amazing things for the glory of the Lord. It didn't stop him from serving the Lord. But when I read this, I find it so sad for Peter. And when I think about how many Christians I know who struggle to understand how much God loves them, how deep the Father's love is. I see a lot of Peters. I see a lot of people who need that deep and powerful and life-changing love revelation, agape revelation, the agape, perfect, eternal, endless, boundless, deep, wide, amazing love that God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has for you that you would know that you are the disciple who Jesus loves most, who God loves most. That you would truly have that love revelation that goes so deep that you can't help but have relief and release from the things that trouble your soul, that keep you up at night, that give you doubt and fear and heartache and the other troubles of this world that cause you pain. Doesn't mean that we don't grieve when it's appropriate to grieve, that we don't feel loss. Doesn't mean that we are happy all the time. And that's a whole other sermon, the difference between happiness and joy. Because we should be joyful in all things, in all situations. We're not always happy though, and that's reasonable. <laughs> that's more than reasonable. Because you know what, if you, if you eat something horrible, that's going to make you unhappy, right? You know, <laughs> that's just how we are. And that's fine. You know, if, if someone steps on your foot, you're going to be unhappy about it. Yeah, you know. So yeah, happiness and joy are completely different things. But that joy, that amazing joy that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit is something that God desires for all of us, for all of his children. And part of that comes from that revelation 
of the agape love, the perfect, godly, endless, boundless, eternal love that the Father has for each and every one of us. He doesn't desire that anyone should experience eternal damnation. But so many choose it. So many people choose to follow the enemy to the lake of fire that was prepared for Satan and his demons. It's not made for people. But a lot of people will choose to follow that path. And sometimes it's because they don't have the revelation of the love of God for them. Today I'm going to keep the message short because the whole service today has been a little bit different with, with our race and everything, with the, the 10K that's going on. I know parking was a nightmare and getting to and from has been quite difficult. Um, I want to leave us with that message and I want to pray for us. I want to pray that you will have the revelation of the love of God, the love of the Father, the love of the Savior, and the love of the Spirit of God, who is love, who dwells in you if you truly believe. So that love is there in you, desiring to be unlocked, desiring to be set free, desiring to have the way of love, the way of the Father, the way of the Holy Spirit in you, leading you and guiding you, not just from the outside, but from within, to live a life of love, to empower you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and to love other people as the Lord your God loves you. So I'm going to pray. Uh, Father God, I just, I lift up each and every person here. I lift up those who are listening online. Um, I lift up even those who weren't able to be here right now. Lord, you can touch people by your Holy Spirit uh, who haven't even heard these words. Lord, I pray that you would pour out an, not just a head understanding, but that as well for those who need it, but a heart understanding that goes deep into the depths of who each and every one of us are of how much you love us, that no weapon that's formed against us may prosper because we will understand that no matter the circumstances of the world around us, no matter what the enemy would speak to us, no matter what other people may say or do, no matter what lies we believed in the past, today the revelation of your love goes deep, so deep that you will change hearts and minds, that you will change lives, that you will transform us into your likeness, Jesus. And your likeness is the likeness of the God who is love. Challenge the things that we hold on to that would stop up like stones over a well, the flow of your Holy Spirit in us from being able to push out the mess and the lies of this world, of the enemy, and spring forth in us like a geyser, that gushing, powerful love of your Spirit inside of us, overflowing from us to the world around us. Give us that revelation today by your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, I pray. Move in power amongst us, your people. Move in power through us, your people. Speak to our hearts and minds. Stir up your spirit inside of us. That we would allow ourselves to surrender to your love that the things that we hold tight to, the things that we put in our hands, the things that would say, no, it's not possible. I can't receive that. I can't have that. That those things would be taken off of us, taken away from us. That that burden would not be something that we shoulder any longer. That we would repent from believing those lies. 
that we would have a change of mind from believing the lies of the enemy and a change of heart that rejects your perfect love and a change of lifestyle that helps us to live lives of love. I pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> so um, Ruth's going to um, play a song. Um, and um, did you have a word? Okay, so he has a word. <laughs> so um, go, you want to come up and share? And, and if the Holy Spirit is speaking to anybody, if anyone has a testimony or word, I don't want to cut you short. Um, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you um, and you think it's something for um, the church as a whole or for the men or the women or for, for a group of people in the church, um, I don't want to quench the moving of the Holy Spirit. So. Um, so this morning before I came, uh, we were a little bit late because I was uh, recording my testimony, uh, being a Buddhist and then Christian for show, who had asked for it to share with her colleagues. And... Um, Part of what I was saying there uh, was that the Buddha will not talk to you from his grave, and the Dalai Lama won't phone you up, but when you become a Christian, uh, by the Holy Spirit, God will speak to you. You will actually hear from God in your spirit. You will actually be able to... Some people can audibly hear from God, some people hear in their spirit. And when Beck stood up and she said that um, she was asked to prophesy over the church in Uganda and she opened her mouth and God gave her the word. So I just felt like God was saying, I want to speak to my people. I want to speak to you more. I want you to be open and hear. And I have so much more to give to this church in Shrewsbury. So following from that, Samuel has decided to stay in uh, and listen to the preach now and he likes to draw and he started drawing I don't know if I can find it he started drawing this this is a Pixar um, logo <laughs> and I said to him why don't you ask God to speak to you to give you something to draw he knows that I paint pathetically at home God gives me pictures to paint for myself and for other people and so he knows that this is a way that God can speak so he turned the page and he began to draw. And this is what he drew. And it's um, <coughs> people and a wood and water and mountains and people up here. And I said to him, so there are people down here and what about here? So where are these people? He said they're in the sky. And I said, is that the rapture? He said, what's the rapture? <laughs> and I said, this is where people are going up to be with Jesus. He said, yeah, that's what it is. So, and I just felt like that is confirmation. God has so much more to communicate to us as a church, and he wants us to be ready to receive that. Mm -hmm. um, so I started speaking 